Hi guys, I'm the Bush Jeb Jim Man, and today I've got another unboxing for you. So, yep, yeah, it should be something really awesome. It is in one of them large boxes, so you probably can guess that it's going to be the Diac rifle. So here I have my trench knife, where well, Second World War that was a really good trench knife, really, or after the test trench knife. But I mean, there's it's not beyond the realms of possibility that it could be used by them off here as well. Um, so. Yep, the reproduction obviously. And I shall be using that to unbox it. First of all, you can see that I got my M16 style hammer there, and my German web in there. I tried to get it set up in the First World War configuration, but it's basically the Second World War one. Um, but yeah, that's because what I'm unboxing is a First World War piece. So that is that has I might just be the wrong end. Difficult, and so put that in my pocket so it's safe. Here is a First World War Gavir 98. It is 1917 dated. There, don't know how well you can see this. In fact, I'll see if I can put the flash on, it might help a little bit. Uh, 1917 date. Uh, DWM produced one, which is pretty awesome. And yeah, I quite like this. Safety works. Yeah, really good. So, um, this has actually been shortened, because obviously Gavir 98 are a lot longer than this, usually. Um, and so what I think probably has happened with this is, oh, what well, it said on the website, and it's probably correct, within 1917-18, the Germans were starting to pioneer the use of Sturmtruppen or Sturmtruppen, and what 
they quite often preferred to have were the shorter rifles because then that obviously allowed a lot better movement in the trenches um, so what they did with some of them I've seen another example which was dug up on a battlefield where they shortened it by just chopping it off he just leaving the pistol grip so you could just grab it like that um, and so yeah that's one an example I've seen so they, it looks like they just shortened it and they've added on sights again you can see that's not how they would have officially been added on at the factory so yeah another interesting thing is the addition of a side mounted sling swivel you can see here um, they've also uh, basically adapted also the front sling swivel as well however they still retain the original 398 um, upper sling swivel and the bottom two as well but the very interesting thing is that they've actually filled in the rear side mounted sling swivel that is very similar to actually the um, VZ24 which um, was a Czech design post post war so yeah I mean that's just very interesting um just have a look at the markings quickly so yeah it looks like Imperial German acceptance mark there and then a couple more on the other side Actually, that was a proof mark, I think. Makes some more down here. Don't know how well you're going to be able to see this. But yeah, I think this is very, very good indeed. It's kind of semi relic condition. It doesn't particularly bother me that much. It's got some interesting stampings down here. Don't know what that means could be French might just be German and some more there I mean it was looks to me as if it hasn't it post what this is left as it was because the post war ones that were got by the by my Republic quite a lot of them not all of them but a large majority of the ones that weren't burnt by the Allies after the First World War um, got turned into uh, what's called K98A Bs or K98As or K98Bs and what they did with that was they quite a lot with the with the A A's they would do lots of fancy stuff basically turn it into a Mavic K98K but slightly longer and with the K98B they just get a VIN 98 add a side sling swivel with the side mount there and the takedown disc this doesn't have a takedown disc I think that's just the unit disc it's got there so yeah I'm just going to have a check of the sights yes quite iconic Let's see if they work and they work which is quite good you need to give them a bit of an oil rack reasonably rusty um, so yeah I'll just check if the bayonet fits on because I'm not sure it will because it's been modified note how I am keeping it in its sheath if there's any peeders out there watching because I do not intend in any way to use this against a person Does fit on surprisingly well, actually, even as a World War II Mauser K98 K bayonet. I mean, I can't see why it wouldn't fit onto the V98. So yeah, it's fitted on quite well. Oh shit! Now I've got to get it off. So now it's off. Let's test. Um, how well it takes strippers. Obviously, these are inerts. It's illegal for me to have real ones. 
Oh, that's a green. And obviously it won't get chambered in because it's deactivated in it. It's like a little slot. But, so yeah. Now we use this to you know, get, get the bits out. So, the nuts. Out. Oh, get it where it's underneath. Anyway, so, yeah, that is basically the end of the video. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I think this is a great addition. Um, so, yeah, I'll give you a little bit of backstory on the green anti as well. Um, so, yeah, as most of you know, it was the First World War main battle rifle of the German army and then after the First World War because the Germans lost um, they in the Treaty of Versailles it limited the Germans down I think it was 130,000 rifles it might have been 100,000 so the way the Germans got around it was they um, converted a large amount of rifles to being carbines and of course carbine isn't a rifle as it is a rifle but um, so the carbon is just slightly shorter than a rifle, so that's how they got around having a large stock of weapons. So, yeah. And then they basically just kept kept the um, kept a reasonably large amount. I I think the amount they kept was about 200,000. Um, you know, there's also quite a lot of German soldiers after the end of the First World War, um, after Germany collapsed basically, um, just went home and took their rifles with them. And so quite a lot of these turned up in um, things like uh, SA, um, SA armories and stuff like that um, as well. And also there's the, the uh, Reds who started the Spartacus revolt and the uh, Munich commune and stuff like that um, as well in 1919 so and there's the Freikorps as well so that is basically all of all of that stuff and then the Germans did have a couple of original kind of style given 98 I've seen a couple of photos it be it's not not uncommon, but reasonably rare to see them with the, the old-fashioned style of tangent sights um, because when they converted them to K98, quite a lot of them to K98Bs they would replace the sights with um, basically a Mauser K98K sight so yeah, they were mainly used by second line units or during the second world war or um, or kind of like a, a stop gap. And Volkstrom used quite a lot of these as well. Because I've seen plenty of photos of Volkstrom carrying these. This possibly might have, after the end of the First World War, found its way into Czechoslovakia and they might have tried something with it. I was just thinking because of the, the side sling swivel mount. It's very similar and almost in exactly the same place as a VZ 34 sling. So. Yeah, and also, what makes me think this modification with the side sling mount possibly was made during the Second World War was because in the First World War, they didn't require this, they didn't need these, because they had a quick sling release um, thing which you just clip onto the bottom there, and the rest of it would loop around here, or, and then for parades they'd have a little piece of metal which would hook up into this hook up here so that is basically the end of the video um, it, I'm gonna have to probably find a Gavir 98 reproduction uh, cleaning rod I might be able to use a K98K one the only problem is the K98K ones don't usually fit because they're obviously designed for K98K not a Gavir 98 that's an Empire Team 3. Well, you might have just seen the Raffin Amp. No. No, I thought I saw a Raffin Amp on the bottom. It's just a, of the magazine where it's just a, a little um, German acceptance mark bow there. I don't know if you can see that very well. 
anyway, so that is basically the end of the video. Hope you guys enjoyed. Um, and I've just got one more thing to say, which is that um, I was halfway through doing my um, how to mount the ZB37 onto its tripod. I have not forgotten about that. I'm going to probably do my next video on that. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, this is going to be a nice addition to my First World War impression and also my Second World War impressions. I mean, they were used during the Second World War, so why the hell not? Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, comment, comment, subscribe. Bye.